Ellis Crawford was an archaeologist and first curator of the Beringer Crawford Museum. Dedicating over 20 years of service to the museum, Crawford touched many lives. These are just some of those stories. When I was about, I think the summer I was eight years old, <clears throat> we started finding fossils when they were excavating foundations for the new houses in the subdivision area where we lived. And we had no idea what they were. So we were collecting all these things in cigar boxes and Mom and Dad didn't know what to do with them as far as identifying them. So they said, well, let's go up to the museum and find out. And we brought our first cigar box full of these things up here. And Mr. Crawford sat on the back steps of the museum and went through piece by piece and told us what they were. And that's, that's how I got the meeting. Brought down here with a artifact collection by my uh, youth leader at the church. And he, he br he brought them down here because he knew Ellis knew about this stuff, and he brought it down here to get a couple of pieces identified, mm -hmm. which were pretty rare things. As we would find more stuff, we would come up here, we got to be regular visitors, and we would always show him what we found because we were proud of what we were finding and so forth. And then when we moved from Rosebud to Park Avenue, we had a new subdivision area to look for things in. That was the Swan Circle subdivision uh, <clears throat> by the Swan Florist on the, on the Dixie Highway there in. Uh, Ellesmere, and that was a really good site for trilobites and isotelus trilobites. And when we started finding those there and he saw those, he started coming out and going on fossil hunts with us there. And as he saw that our interest was continuing, he started inviting me as the oldest at that point to come and join his other group of kids and teenagers uh, doing the other kinds of more professional digs and things. And that's how I got involved in all of that. My, my, I think that my best memories is, are just being here with him every day and, and listening to him talk to people. And at that time he wasn't doing too much in the way of scientific work. So I wasn't, you know, again, the digging or, or cleaning artifacts or anything. It was mostly cleaning glass, <laughs> cleaning bathrooms, cutting grass. Yeah, but, but again, helping him keep the museum nice and getting clean. And it, well, eventually he did, in the wintertime, let me start helping open cases and handling artifacts and things to, to dust them and, and keep them in good shape. They started the Big Bone uh, dig, and I was too young to go on that. I didn't uh, meet the age requirements for the University of Nebraska's um, insurance company and whatever. So um, <clears throat> Mr. Crawford worked out a deal that I was employed by the Covington Parks. And I worked at the museum and took care of the day-to-day -day things here at the museum uh, for five summers while he was down at Big Bone. But the, the, the biggest thing was you know, every time a school group would come up, he would give them a guided tour and I would follow him around and listen to everything he said about everything. But that proved to be my disadvantage because eventually he goes, Lee, you 